Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy, and this is a custom Tableau workshop on table calculations. So if you, you've been following my introductory videos, my custom Tableau videos, what you'll be noticing is that I've been using table calculations quite extensively. I've been using percentage of total on my donut charts, using running totals on on my waterfall charts, a number of different places, and they're definitely a big part of the Tableau experience. So I'm going to show you how to do this um, using Tableau. And in fact, I'm using Tableau Public uh, as we speak, 9.0. So let's get started. Uh, let's drop customer name to row, and I'll provide a link to to this data as well. Actually, change this automatic. Uh, what you'll see here just does the normal chart. And then you want to click on this inverted triangle and then go down to running total. And you'll see here, it just does a running total of the, of the values by customer name. So for example, this error, Aaron is, uh, is really made up of these two values to these, this third customer is really the value that's showing is really made up of the individual values of these three customers and it's sorted by alphabetic order. You could sort it another way if you want to as well. What I like to do sometimes just to get a view is I like to do line charts and then drop a customer segment in and see how each of the customers are impacting the running values of the of the discounts. So you can see which customers are we giving excessive discounts to and in what customer segment. So that's that's nice, that's handy. So let's let's drop order date there. And let's move on to the next one. So here I'm going to clear table calculations. And then I'm going to go to the next one, which is difference. And difference is pretty straightforward. So you'll see here I'm going to drop discount to as a comparison. Just drop it here so we have two charts. So you can see here the, the value discount is 105.18. And then here it's 105.778. So you expect the difference to be 0.6, which it is. So you can see right there. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, definitely a really like powerful tool to, to use. Difference is great. So what you'll notice is that there's going to be a null value, and there's always going to be a null value on the first one because the before the first one, there is no nothing to compare to. But you can also change what you compare to. So here it does relative to previous. You can also do relative to next. So you'll notice in, in the last year there's none there. Or an interesting one. That, at least what I find interesting is um, comparison to uh, to the first. So you notice the first is always going to be zero because the first relative to the first is obviously nothing. And then you can see how how you've changed since the base, which I which I think is pretty interesting. So we're going to move on to the next one, which is going to be pretty similar. We're going to quick table calculation and go percentage of difference, and you'll see that it's going to look very similar in terms of its shape. All it does is provide you the percentage uh, total as well. So in case you're wondering whether or not we could do it based off a of percentage, uh, we certainly can. It is going to somewhat uh, look different depending on what you're comparing to. Uh, the magnitudes, at least, not necessarily the direction compared to the difference, just because uh, if, uh, if your bases are different, then it's going to change the how high or how small the changes are relative to the actual absolute value. Okay, perfect. So the next one we are going to cover is we are going to cover percentage of total which is actually one of my favorites so you can see here the percentage of total you can see these values are pretty similar so i'm actually going to drop the the values here so you can see how there's not no really like big extremes in this value so each of the values are around 25 percent which makes sense which makes sense in in this case i'm going to drop customer segment to color and then we're going to take advantage of edit, editing the table calculation. So we haven't really edited the table calculation uh, prior to, besides doing the relative to. But so this is going to be a little bit more advanced. So hopefully everyone can can follow along. Okay. So we're going to click on this inverted triangle. Click on table calculations. So right now it's doing it doing the percentage of total relative to to across the table for each of them. And that's going to be the same as if if we, for example, if we do down, what it will do is it'll compare the values downwards. So 
what that will look like is that each of these will then be compared to. So you can see here, this is 37. And we know that it totaled 105, so it should be roughly around 37%. You can see the value is there. Uh, and that's going to be the same as if you compared, you summarize the values based off customer segment. So imagine you're, for each date, you're going to take the customer segments, summarize them, calculate the percentage total. So it's going to be similar. So if you guys have been watching my ACL or idea ones, similar concept. If, for example, you wanted to do it based off of order date, what you'll see here is it's going to be based off of each of the, the various orders. So you can see here it's going to be pretty similar to, to uh, you can see uh, up here, it's going to, they're all going to hover around 25%. You can see, actually, let me expand this date. I'll expand to this more detailed quarters ones so you can actually see the details. So you can see here the six for consumers is pretty high and makes up a pretty large percentage of each of these. So that's doing it by which date, which basically takes each customer segment, summarizes it by date, and then calculates your value. If you wanted to do it based off of both of them, one you could do is do it based off of table calculations and it will do it across both. So you can see that the total for this is 417. So 417 relative to, or four, no, let's, just, let's just do this math to prove it out. So if we do 9.2, right? Uh, Sorry, 9.29 divided by 417. You'll see that's, a, and then we'll just multiply this by 100 so you can see it, 2.27, which is exactly what the calculation is. So it's basically summarizing it on both segment and order date. Another way of achieving that is going edit table calculation, going at advance, and then basically picking both of these. And it's gonna look exactly the same because it's comparing it across which is across all the, the, the various values. And that's partly, no, across is not always gonna be like that. It's just that your your dimension is across, so it's gonna pick up all the values in that manner. Okay, hopefully everyone followed that because it does get a little bit complicated with percentage of totals, but they're really important if you have pie charts. So I'm gonna actually go through example with uh, with a pie chart. So let's do some, I know some people aren't exactly fans of pie charts, but these are important concepts. So we are going to put on color and then put discount. Okay, so let's drop, oh, don't wanna do that. And then we just need to drop this to angle. And then let's just drop discount and then do the percentage of total. This is a probably gonna be a, hopefully provide a very clear example. Oh, it's, oh, okay, that's interesting. Oh, no, sorry, right there. Percentage of total. So you can see right now it's calculating each across, which in my opinion really doesn't make much sense. So if I wanted to do it, so I challenge you to pause the video and figure out which one we're gonna do. So hopefully everyone's returned and tried it out on their own. Uh, we're going to go down and then you can see here the breakout by these different values and you can even, for example, drop the values and do your own calculations to verify. So again, very powerful, um, really interesting, uh, great way, great function to use. So here I'm going to drop order date and drop discount and then we're going to go, we're going to go to rank. So Rank is a good function. Basically what it does is it ranks all the various values. So let's drop discount again so you can see for comparison sakes. Uh, so you can see here, each of these, the highest value is going to be this 2010 because it has the, the biggest discount sum. And you can see here, it's ranked number one. And this is obviously not the greatest view. A lot of times you, you'd use this to filter. Uh, so I'll give you actually a good example of when we use this. So if I had customer names and I wanted to show my profit by customer, 
but I only want to show the top 10 customers. So, okay, so the way we do that is we go to this table calculation, go to sum, okay, go to quick table calculation. Obviously, you can do a calculation on this as well, create a calculated field, which I'm sure a lot of you are telling, you, telling me to do, but you can also do it on rank here. And then, for example, go to 10, which I actually find like really useful. So you can see here who your top 10 customers. To make it even more interesting, we are going to draw up customer segment, right? And then we are going to then try to figure out, can we show, in this case, it's already done it, um, the top, so here's showing the top 10 customers by segment. But if I didn't want to do it that way, so I can go edit table calculation, and I and then what I can do is then do it based. So what we need to do, this gets a little bit tricky, is we need to do it based off of customer segment and customer name. Press OK, apply it, and then go to 10. Actually, yeah, go to 10. And then you'll see here, now it's ranked them based off of the customer segment and name together. So you can actually get the top 10. So this is a very powerful function, really great to use, really effective, but you do have to understand how the table calculations work in order to use it effectively. Okay, perfect. So the next one we're going to do, let's just drop order date and discount. We may use other fields. Uh, so here we can do it based off a of percentile. So you can see here, similar so you can see here the percentiles for for each of these and obviously it's it you can also change it so for example you can go edit table edit table calculation and then do it descending if you wanted to for example have the remember that the in this case it does four four percentiles so 25 percent 50 75 and 100 100 being the in this case the lowest amount right and then uh, the twenty-five percent being the highest highest value. So you can see that here. If we drop this chart, you can see here that two thousand eleven was lowest, while two thousand ten was the highest. So again, very interesting. A lot of times I use it for filtering. If I wanted this, the top ten percentiles as opposed to the top ten or top five, uh, to investigate further, to use these filters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Really powerful function. So let's clear these table calculations. Let's move on to the next one. So the next one we are going to do is moving average. So we're gonna click on moving average and then I'm gonna change this to quarters. And then moving average requires quite a bit of, not quite a bit, but you do need to do your edit table calculation so you understand what's actually happening. So you can see here, it basically does the moving average. It does the current value plus the previous two values, and it does it across the table. So for example, you can also do it based off the next two values, and then kind of normal, it's a good chance to actually normalize your data. So for example, if I had it based off of week number, if I didn't have it, didn't have a table calculation, it would look really sporadic because it's gonna have all these spikes. While if, if you assume that your data is gonna go up and down, but gonna hover around this certain median value, then, doing the moving average actually provides you a, a smoother uh, indication of the of the values so you can see here it does it based off the previous two and then as you add more values in it's going to smooth it out even more so you can see here if i were to go five and five you'd see it go even smoother so pros and cons i think it shows trends better than uh, with with the with the eye than just doing it based off the normal values here, if you if you didn't include current value, obviously the the first two wouldn't show up. It's gonna show null if there's not enough values. So here you're gonna have four nulls, and the, the reason why is that if you think about it, the first and second one don't have enough values because there's no previous two, and then the last two are not gonna have enough values because there are no next two when you go to the last ones. You can also do secondary calculations, so you can do check the the moving average change from from the previous value uh, some of these are are pretty useful uh, but again some of these are a bit of over engineering um, that it wouldn't I can't really find a practical use case uh, for them 
at least currently in my my line of work or what I've seen. I've seen I've seen some effective examples of it being used, uh, but I don't really use it that often. Moving average, a really like great calculation. So you can also do count compound compound growth. So you can see the growth is always going to be pretty humongous on the first first uh, based off the second period, right? Because the first one doesn't have very much. So a lot of times I so I always always find does this weird spike. So sometimes I like to one way of dealing with that is to do the percentage difference compared to the next one. And then obviously then you have these weird values, weird spikes, but still still interesting, still something useful to to look at. And that's really the majority of the table calculations. I we pretty much cover them all on how we use them. If you have any other questions, any other topics that you want me to cover, more than happy them to add them to to my list. So I post videos for my class that I teach at the University of Waterloo, but also uh, any custom other ideas. I produce a number of different videos. So if you have any uh, questions or comments or areas that you want me to cover, just feel free to leave in the comment section below or drop me an email or put it on the discussion board. More than happy to to help where I can to uh, help move analytics into the future. So thank you for watching and I look forward to speaking to you next time.